Hey there, it's me again, Michelle, and welcome back to my Canadian History Channel. Today's episode, Canada's National Flag, will be about our flag, the Maple Leaf. Now here's a question for you. Wasn't our flag always the Maple Leaf? Nope. Then what was our first flag, and how did we finally get to the Maple Leaf? First off, although our bold red Maple Leaf is instantly recognizable around the world, it is relatively young. We actually flew a few different flags before the Maple Leaf was adopted. Now, long before we became a nation, the emblems or flags of European nations were used to identify their settlers and explorers. French emblems and flags were used in New France, and when New France fell, the British flags such as the Union Jack were used. After Confederation in 1871, the Canadian Red Ensign, which includes both the Union Jack and Canada's then current coat of arms, was used unofficially as our national flag. It would basically remain this way for almost a hundred years, until 1965. In 1892, the Canadian Red Ensign became official for use on Canadian ships too, but it also continued to be used on land as an unofficial national flag. Then in 1921, King George V granted Canada a new official coat of arms, which then took its place on the Canadian Red Ensign. In 1925, Parliament established a committee to design a new national flag for the Dominion of Canada, but the project was quickly shelved out of fear of political instability. Then, in 1946, a second parliamentary committee was formed to consider a design for a new national flag, without result. So again, Prime Minister Mackenzie King cancelled the project. The Union Jack remained the national flag, and the Canadian Red Ensign continued to be flown on government buildings. Then there was a minor change in 1957. The leaves on the shield of Canada's coat of arms were changed from green to red, and the Canadian Red Ensign was modified. Shortly thereafter, in 1964, we had the Great Flag Debate. After much debate in the House of Commons, Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson created a new parliamentary committee to select a national flag before the upcoming 1967 centennial year. In 1964, after reviewing many proposals, the committee selected the concept from George Stanley that it would inspire the graphic design of Canada's current national flag. Then finally, in 1965, Canada adopted its new national flag, the Maple Leaf, with its iconic and singular graphic design. A royal proclamation was signed by Queen Elizabeth II on January 28, and the new flag was raised on Parliament Hill on February 15, 1965. And why, you may ask, was the maple leaf chosen? Well, the maple leaf began to serve as a Canadian symbol as early as the 18th century, and even before that, long before the arrival of European settlers, indigenous peoples had already discovered the food properties of maple sap, which they gathered every spring. And for ourselves, since the 1800s, Canadians have paid tribute to the maple leaf many times. For example, in 1860, the maple leaf was incorporated into the badge of the 100th Regiment of Foot and was used in decorations for the visit of the Prince of Wales to Canada that year. In 1867, Alexander Muir wrote The Maple Leaf Forever as a song for Confederation. Then from 1876 to 1901, the maple leaf appeared on all Canadian coins. And during the First World War, the maple leaf was included in the badge of the Canadian Expeditionary Force. And in 1921, three maple leaves were included into the Canada coat of arms. And from 1937 to 2012, the maple leaf was used on the front of our one cent coin. Then in 1939, during the Second World War, many Canadian troops used the maple leaf as a distinctive sign, displaying it on badges as well as on army and naval equipment. In 1957, the color of the maple leaf on the Canada coat of arms was changed from green to red. And finally, in 1965, the red maple leaf flag, as designed by George Stanley, was officially adopted as a national flag of Canada. 
So you see, the maple leaf has been a proud part of our history and identity for quite some time, even before becoming front and center on our national flag. Well, that's it for our beautiful flag. Please stay tuned for the next episode, the Halifax Explosion of 1917, the largest human-made explosion at that time. Now remember, at any time, feel free to leave comments or questions below, and I'll do my best to respond to them all. And please, be a true Canadian and be polite. And if you like this content, please give this video a thumbs up. And click that subscribe button below to see more. And remember, hit the bell if you'd like to be notified of any new content. Thanks everyone, and have a great day.